Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be talking about Lincoln Memorial pennies and generally what to do if you get an old roll of them uh, that looks to be pretty uncirculated because this is a topic that I've been getting a lot of requests about. I think people wonder, you know, what should I be doing if I have 50 pennies often in like an original bank wrap roll or, you know, this one says Abbott Coin Counter Company, Grand Connecticut, USA, but looks like it was produced uh, shortly after 1964, back when these were pretty modern. You know, is this a roll that's going to be worth hundreds of thousands? You know, I got a lot of people asking those types of questions. I think that there's a lot of different uh, ways that you can answer that question, but there are also some major pitfalls that I see a lot of different people falling into. And I think that's what I want to address because I think a lot of the, the questions that people have is, so I've got a roll of pennies uh, and I see that PCGS graded Mint State 67 red 1964 pennies. Right now, the price guide on them is right around $1,000. There's been 18 graded at that level. And, you know, do I have 50,000 bucks worth of coins? There's 167 plus. That's about a $10,000 coin. Um, but I think that that's very misguided because, and this is catered probably towards more beginner collectors, but just to understand what you can find on these and then what you can't find because there are definitely some things that you want to be searching for that can be massively valuable. Uh, on the other hand, there's probably not as uh, much value as a beginner collector uh, might think. Because uh, So first, just what to understand. Uh, the grading companies, not all of these are going to come back Mint State 67 red. Um, probably most of them are going to be like Mint State 64 red in that range, 65 possibly. But I mean, even this one, there's a few spots on the coin. Uh, even if it was spotless, you know, maybe it would be 65, which is a $8 coin. Uh, 66 is a $24 coin. They might give you a 66 plus, which is like a 40 or $50 coin. Uh, but if you're not going on a bulk rate and you're not a dealer authorized submitter, you know, you're probably going to be paying 25, 30 bucks a coin. And so even then, if one or two of them come back 66 plus and you submit a whole roll that would be a very successful outcome in my opinion and you'd get crushed uh, in terms of how much you'd be paying versus the coins that you would end up with however that doesn't mean that uh, none of these are valuable you know and certainly if you have the right eye and you're really good at it you could learn how to cherry pick but there's a lot of people who have that eye and there's only 18 or 19 coins that were made uh, that are at PCGS in the pop report that are 67 or higher. And this is, I'm not exactly sure what the mintage is, but probably, uh, yeah, 2.6 billion I have in front of me. So out of those coins. So those coins have almost perfect strike, incredible eye appeal, booming luster. The thing to look for though on the 64 in this specific case are the varieties. There's two double die reverses that are recognized in the cherry pickers guide and obviously those are going to differ by date but that's uh, something that I have on my channel is a lot of different videos talking about single coins what types of varieties you can search for on each of them uh, and even if you have a variety or the other thing to do would be to look for errors whether it's a cud um, whether it's you know a blank planchet or like a you know, a double struck coin or off center strike, but those aren't really going to come in rolls. Maybe a few of them, maybe if it was double struck, rotated in collar and looks pretty normal, you know, you can cherry pick the coins uh, looking when you're looking closely for the varieties, but then you have to pay additional fees for variety attribution or error encapsulation, you know, shipping uh, out and, and back is like $38 minimum. Uh, just as a fixed charge for whatever you're submitting. So instead, I would say, you know, when you get rolls like this, I mean, if you're going to crack it open, it's because you're looking for varieties. And even then, most of the time, you're probably not going to find them. Uh, I think you could, uh, as a strategy, try to go to a show and see what true examples in person of a 67 or 68 red Lincoln Memorial coin looks like. So that you really have a sense for how nice the coins need to be uh, for where you would eventually submit them. Uh, and then really, it's the variety finding that's going to make it pay off. Unless, I mean, again, there's some people I'm sure that really know how to do this. But on a coin as common as the 64, you know, and most of these have had, you know, a lot of hits on them or, you know, the strike isn't particularly strong on the back of that coin. That's not a particularly attractive coin, even though it's technically uncirculated, been sitting here for a long time. You can, however, try to buy these types of things from like coin shops for a dollar a roll. They don't really want to deal with it. They don't want to 
take this and pack it up and ship it out and make, you know, sell it for seven or eight dollars and then have to deal with the process of everything related to it. They have to pay an employee to take it to the post office. There's all sorts of problems why you wouldn't want to be doing that. So I think what you could do is try to get a big bunch of these and then either search them and take the risk and maybe make some fines that way. Or you could just sell them in large batches. So if you get 200 uncirculated penny rolls and they're all Lincoln Memorial, somebody's probably going to pay a lot more than $100, which is their face value for them. And you can try to buy them really close to 50 cents a roll. I think that that's a much better strategy to do. But I've seen lots of people, they say, I think I have something I don't want to tell anybody. I have 50 gorgeous pennies and I think they're all going to come back 67, 68. And I, when I've seen that, that's never really happened. Again, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6 billion made and there's 20 at the 67. There's only there's less than 100 of those 2.6 billion that have come back in a, a state that's even profitable for the submitter. And that's not including anything that's sort of gorgeously toned. But to tell the truth, these aren't great items. That's why they've been sitting around as long as they have, and they haven't really gone up too much in value. I think, again, the big thing with this is know the varieties, right? Like 1965, I think that there are a few varieties, but they're not as major as the 64 double die reverse that you could look for on those ones. And there's probably none in there, but there also might be one or two, and that's probably a lot where the premiums are coming from. You know, If you have a true unsearched roll of 1969 SBU coins, the double die in there is going to be worth 100000 so you'll have people wanting to bid that way up. Most of those rolls are going to have been searched, but if you really get an unsearched one, well, in that case, you have something much more valuable. Then you can decide, do you want to crack it out, take the risk, or not? So that's really all that I have to say on these coins, but I think that it's a video that I'll be able to refer people to in the future, just because so many people ask, hey, do I have something really good here? Again, look on a year-by-year, -year, look at eBay sold comps to price these, see what they're actually selling for, and this doesn't apply to wheat pennies. Wheat penny uncirculated rolls often much more valuable, and maybe those are a little bit more worth cherry-picking because if you get a 66 or 66 plus, then that's worth a ton of money. On the right dates, you know, 65s are great. There's all sorts of different ways of looking at that, but that's what we've got here today. Thanks so much for tuning in and let me know if you have a different perspective on this issue. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe to Treasure Town and get in touch with me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, check out my website, treasuretowncoins.com, for news and updates related to the channel and collectibles in general. Lastly, there's a link tree in the description with links to all of my other sites as well as some affiliate links that can support the channel. But with that being said, have a great day and I'll hope to see you on some of my videos in the future.